Canes fam, Canes fam, what's going on, Miami Hurricanes fans? It's your boy B Law 11B. You know, I'm 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 back at my house out in the country here in Central Texas. If you're wondering why I'm out, I'm a military veteran, so my time in the military put me out here in Central Texas. Uh, hopefully, I'll be getting back to to Florida soon. I plan on moving back to Florida and you know being close to my friends and fam and um um. I wanted. To, I got some last minute thoughts about that LSU, Miami, that Miami LSU game Sunday night. It's Tuesday night. I know it's in the past. We're looking forward to Savannah State. Quite frankly, Savannah State is fool's gold, fool's gold, because you know we're gonna look like all American, all pro with Savannah State. At least I hope. I hope we do. Um. But the reason why I got some last minute thoughts. Because uh, I'm not, like I said, I'm I'm not sitting in my parking lot at the stadium right after the game, all frustrated with beer with beer thoughts, you know, about seeing my team get smoked. Okay. Uh, but I was what I like to do, and, and the reason why I made this video because one of the things I like to do after Miami Hurricanes games, I like to get online, I like to get on Twitter, YouTube, and look up the reactions and see what other Miami Hurricanes fans are talking about after the games. And one of the channels that I follow that I that I'm subscribed to is a, a brother by the name of Alonzo Twelve Nineteen to You Family. If you're a Miami Hurricanes fan. Yeah, subscribe to that brother's channel. It's legit. And there's a couple of other good channels, Kane Shades and, you know, uh, Mark Rogers. He does a little commentary. But but this video with uh, Alonzo1219, it was a post-game video that he was doing. He was kind of sharing his thoughts about the disappointing loss to LSU. And one of the LSU fans had commented, made in the comment section, basically in a nutshell, saying that Miami lost because LSU was bigger, stronger, and faster. And I am saying, wrong, wrong. That is not the reason why Miami lost that game. They did get they they did not in any way get out physical by LSU. So real quick, look, I'm 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 just a fan, okay. But I'm just giving you my humble opinion. While my beautiful Miami Hurricanes, while my wonderful Miami Hurricanes, who I've been rooting for for over 35 years, disappointed us Sunday night, okay, and. And really in no particular order, the reasons why they lost were special teams, play calling, and quarterback play. Uh, special teams, because Fiegels, Fiegels, I, I'm pretty sure at Green Tree practice fields, the young man is knocking him out of the park, but under the bright lights, he was giving the defense a short field to work with all night long. And you can have your defense, kudos to Manny Diaz, he did what he could despite what some people are saying, but they don't understand your defense can only do so much when they're trying to defend a 35, 45, 50, 50 yard, 55 yard field all game long. They're, they're eventually, they're going to fail. They're going to fail. You know what I'm saying? You can't, you can't set your defense up for failure like that. You know, they're going to get tired. And then you compound that with the fact that they would get a 35, like a 45, 55-yard field to defend, okay, they would defend it. They would send LSU, like for the first 10, 12 minutes of that game, they would send LSU three and out, six and out, okay. And then our offense would get on the field, and it'd be three, three and out. They'd get on they, – they get – the defense would get off the field, and by the time you – you know, you finish your Gatorade, it's time to put your helmet back on and get back out there to, to play defense. You're going to lose every time that way. Um, next reason why we lost, the play calling. Very vanilla, uh, very unimaginative. It, and I think it, it just seems stubborn. Like Coach Mark Rick, he's trying, to he's trying to put a square peg into a round hole. And it's been that way. The square peg round hole has been that way for the past five games. And it's just like, ah, come on, come on, make this work, make this work, and it's not going to work. Coach, trying to run those running backs in between the center and the guard, you know, in between the tackles, it's not – that offensive line is not built for that. You've got all that speed at running back. Why aren't, we, why aren't we sweeping these teams to death, pulling those guards? Because the offensive line might not be that strong, but they are athletic. 
I mean, the only kid on that offensive line that's capable of delivering pancakes is Navon Donaldson. That young man's a beast. But we need to utilize more of the speed and try to get away from this power, this old school SEC power game because it's not working. The game has evolved and the play calling is too simplistic. It, it really is. Um, and and the main and, and probably the main reason why we lost really the quarterback play was and I, I really and I I don't like to do this, but it kind of feels like the needs and the feelings of individual players and personnel are being put above the needs of the program. I'm being put above the needs of the program. Um, so, you know, I think I was thinking, I was like, now you've got two kids that were highly recruited out of high school and another kid that was fairly recruited out of high school as quarterbacks. Two of them, two of those quarterbacks have been in the system over a year. And you mean to tell me they haven't been developed enough to where you can pull the trigger on them in the third quarter in the most uh, important game of the year? I don't know. That means that that means that the quarterbacks aren't getting developed. And if that's the case, then your quarterback coach needs to go. And we know that's not going to happen. You know, and I say that because remember last year, man, we watched Nick Saban pull a quarterback and Jalen Hurts. That guy was 26 and two as a starter and Nick Saban pulled him in the middle of a game and not just any game, the national championship game and put in a freshman. Okay, and that kid came in and won the game. So there's no excuses. All right. There's no excuses, especially at the beginning of the, of the year. And I'm saying this, and, and this goes back to that whole me uh, disputing the bigger, stronger, faster comment by the LSU fan, because um, what I saw, and I was at the game. Like I said, I was at the game. Section 125, row 18, seat 26. I was at that game, and what I saw all game long was LSU secondary getting torched. They were getting burned all game long. Jeff Thomas was open the entire game. Jeff Thomas was open. Those, them two freshmen, uh, uh, Jordan and Mallory, them, them two freshman tight ends, they were open all game long. Okay? You know, but it doesn't matter if, and, and we're not going to blame the offensive line because Malik Rozier had a clean pocket. Three or four seconds is long enough to pass a ball in college football. And, the, and what I saw was the more time he had, the worse he threw the ball. The more time he had, the worse he threw. And he's got these happy feet. Instead of staying and trying to be disciplined in the pocket and reading the secondary and getting passes open to wide open guys, he, he drops back. And as soon as that pocket starts to develop on the outside and flow behind him, it's like he's got too much spidey sense. It goes off and he's ready to run. He's ready to take off. Or he just chucks. It's almost like Hail Mary pass every time he passes the ball because he just chucks it and prays for the best. You know, instead of throwing it, put it in tight spaces, in tight windows. Because, you know, you got guys that are wide open, but you're overthrowing them by five yards, underthrowing them by two yards, or throwing the ball 15 feet above their head. You're not, you're not going to win no football games, man. So those are the issues that need to be resolved. And they really do. And I'm just hoping that that I really pray that Coach Rick ain't real, real willing to sink with this guy. Because I'm telling you right now, if we don't win this Coastal, three years in, University of Miami. Now, enough respect to the kid. He was recruited as a baseball player. You know, if Miami wasn't a squad that produced two Heisman Trophy winning quarterbacks, five national championships, and a ton of dudes in the NFL, I would say, yeah, Malik's good enough to start. But my, the University of Miami, they have produced two Heisman Trophy winning quarterbacks, five national championships, and a bunch of dudes in the NFL. So he's not good enough to start. Okay? He, he, he was a good bridge gap last season between Brad Kaya. But to ride or die with him, I, I, it's just the wrong way to go. but I, And I fear that's what's going to happen. I fear that's what's going to happen. And, you know, but we got, you know, we're looking on, okay, the game's over with. Game's over with. Game's done. It's in the books. 
We got smoked. Kudos to LSU fans. It was a great atmosphere. Let's look forward to Savannah State. Then we got the ACC schedule right around the corner. I, I think we're still good enough to win the Coastal, but remember we won a lot of games last season by the skin of our teeth. Every single one of those games are going to be out for blood, and they are going to be looking for revenge, so they're going to be bringing their A game, okay? Because a lot of those teams walked off that, that field, and a lot of those teams that we played last season, they walked off the field saying we should have beat those guys. We could have beat those guys. How in the hell didn't we beat those guys? And that's what they're going to be. They're going to be bringing it. But, um, and then there's a couple of teams that this is going to want vengeance. Virginia Tech, their defense looks really good, and their special teams, as always, look really good. Their, their, their offense is vanilla. I wasn't blown away by their offense, but they, they put up enough running game and enough defense to win. And that's really all you need at the end of the day, running game, defense, and special teams, right? And a quarterback that doesn't make mistakes and makes the throws that you ask him to make. Not asking, we're not asking Rozier to be Dan Marino. Not asking him to be Drew Brees. Not asking him to be the Deshaun Watson. Just make the throws that we need you to throw. They're not big throws, not complicated throws, because your re receiver Sunday night was having two, three, four, five yards space between them and the guys trying to cover him. They were wide open all night, and you just couldn't, you couldn't see it. I could see it. And uh, all I ever did was play a little bit of high school football and some optimist football. You know what I mean? I'm not even a savant guru at the game. But anyway, that's it, man. That's my rant. You know, I'm, I'm gonna try to get to. I'm gonna try and see if I can get to at least three games this season. I want to go to a couple of games this season. I'm, I'm gonna see if I can get to a couple of Dolphins games this season. I'm really trying to move back to Florida. You know what I mean? I gotta, you know. Um, Got to get some things, square some things together here because, you know, I want to get to more uh, Hurricanes games, some some home games. Um, like and subscribe. You know, I don't really talk about much. I just get on here and I talk shit, you know what I mean, about my, my basic thoughts about what I've seen as a fan. I've been rooting for the Miami Hurricanes for yeah, about 35 years, maybe even a little longer. Um and I'm just hoping, like, hey, all the other fans, if we have a great season, that this season is even better than last season. Last season was magical. But let's repeat that and do better than that. Right now, so far, we're not off to a good start. But I think we can turn it around. I think it's early. It's still early enough to turn it around. Got 11 more games to go, baby. Let's do this. Canes for life. Canes fam. University of Miami Hurricanes fans. Casual fans. Alumni. Whoever you are, if you're rooting for the Canes, you get love from my way. And uh, y'all have a good night.